When posting a high volume of transactions, you want to organize those transactions into particular groups. We call those groups journals. Your system comes preloaded with 21 journals. They are listed on the menu tree under the heading Journals and start with the A1 New Vehicle Sales going all the way down to the Z1 General Journal. Each journal has its own properties, which means that transactions that are posted to these journals may have a different effect on things such as your vehicle inventory or on the way a customer's balance is handled based on the journal that it was posted from. Refer to the journal setup video when it comes to modifying the particular settings of each journal. To open a journal, you need only to click the journal name and the screen will change reflecting only those transactions that have been posted for that month in that journal. You can easily identify what journal that you're posting into. First, the journal label in the menu tree changes to blue when we're in that journal. But it's far more easier to look up at the color of the title bar since each journal is color coded. It has the journal letter code, it has the journal name, and it shows you the month and year that you will be posting into. Below the title bar is a listing grid. It will show you all transactions that have been posted into this journal. Let's click the Add button and create our first journal. The transaction input screen has now been opened in an add record state. You do not need to click the Add button at this point since it was clicked on the previous screen. At the top of the transaction entry screen, you can see the header information. It shows you the company number. It has an input field for the reference number. And in this case, we have set this journal to auto number the reference number for us. As you can see where it says auto number. And then you have the transaction date. By clicking the drop down arrow, it brings up a calendar for which you can select and another date. The default posting month and year, and whether this transaction is posted. On Systems 2000, you can enter a transaction in, and you can save that transaction. But that transaction will not be affecting your general ledger reports unless it has been checked off as posted. The system defaults to posted. It's not a step that you have to remember to do. This feature is useful when you have entered in a large transaction and you wish to save that transaction but you find out that you are missing some information. Instead of having to exit and lose the information, you can save it in a non-posted state. You can then come back and recall that transaction, make any corrections that you need, and then say post it to the GL. It isn't until a transaction has passed all edit checks that the system will allow you to post it to the GL. Again, this is not a step that you have to remember to do. The system will automatically post transactions. It's for those cases where you do not want the transaction to post to accounting because you don't have all of the information and you just wish to save the transaction and come back to it in the future. Or the system looks and says it doesn't pass all of the edit checks and then it will allow you to save that transaction and again come back and correct it later. To the right you have the date that this transaction was posted and who it was posted by. And then you have comments that you can enter in on this transaction. Notice the background color of this header. It matches the color that has been assigned to the standard journal. It's quick easy reference to know that you are posting in the journal that you have specified. First, let's click the Minimize button, and that puts our transaction over here in the current items, allowing us to go to other places in the program, and then we can return and have that journal back up on the screen. We're going to go to Edit, Modify, and Add Modified GL Accounts. For this demonstration, we have set up a few demo GL accounts. So we'll type in Demo, and that brings up these demo accounts that we have. If I click on the first one, you can see that the account number is called Demo1 and the description is Require Entity. We've used this description just to show us for an example that this account when used will require an entity on the posting screen. Demo Account 2 says Require Stock Number and you can see that here the Required Stock Number checkbox is checked, Require Comments, Require the Entity and the Stock Number, and then we have a transaction split. Any transactions that are posted to Demo 5 
will actually be split between Demo 5A and Demo 5B at 50% each. Keeping this in mind, we'll close the screen and reopen our journal entry that we had saved in the current item. Let's enter our first transaction on this entry. We'll start with Demo 1. As you can see, the description that we entered in on the GL account screen for Demo 1 is Require Entity. We put a default profit center on the GL account also and a default department. We can change that default to anything that we would like on this transaction line. Likewise with the department. And as you can see highlighted in red is the entity number. Meaning that this entity number is required before we will be able to post this transaction. When an entity number is required you normally want to enter in an entity reference number also. The entity reference number is that supplier or customer's reference number, such as if you purchase some goods from a supplier and they sent you an invoice, that invoice would have their number on it. It is different from your reference number, which is listed up here. In the entity number field, you can either type the number in of the entity or you can use the standard search. The search is always a button with three dots. Clicking it brings up a search grid. This is standard throughout the system. If I want to search by last name, I can click the last name column header and you can see that it says type the last name you want to search for. We're going to go by company name and we're going to type in 2000. Pressing enter brings up every company name with the numbers 2000 in them. We're going to select systems 2000 and hit OK. Once we have selected the entity, just press the tab button and the entity number will appear and move us into the stock number field. On this line item, the stock number is not required. If I wanted to enter a stock number, I could. It is not stopping me from putting in that additional information. It's just stating that it is not a required field. We'll type in a debit amount of $100. We'll skip the credit amount. And then we're to the UC column, which stands for unit counts. When we set up GL account demo 1, we click the option for track unit counts and thus it defaults with the number 1 under the unit count column. If I want to change that to a different number or maybe set it to 0 or change it to 2, just type in the number that you want for unit counts. And then the comments field. Enter any comments you like about this line item. The final column is the document ID. When tickets are created in the part, service, or even an F&I deal, and they are transferred over into the accounting system, that document is automatically tied to this transaction line. But in this case, we are entering our own transaction. And on Demo 1, we want to tie this $100 entry to a specific document. So we're going to click the Search button and bring up the Document Chooser screen. Currently, it's in finance deal mode. If I click the button for finance deal, the grid fills with all of the deals that we have in our finance department. I need only to select a deal and click OK. And that has a useful benefit. If we ever pull up this transaction in accounting in the future, we can click the view button and the system will actually launch that deal. So I do not have to leave the accounting system and go open up the F&I module to look at that deal. I just have to click the view button. Let's move to the next line. We'll type in demo 2 and we hit enter. In this case we have a profit center B that was the default. Again I could change that and a default department of payroll. The stock number field is highlighted in red. I can either type in my stock number or I can click the search field and search for a stock number that I want to enter in here. Since I know my stock number I will just type it the color of the field changes. The next GL account number is Demo 3. As you can see, we set this account up to require comments and to the far right the comments field is highlighted in red. The entity number and stock number are duplicating as we enter down through the screen. Even though the entity number and the stock number are not required on this field, we populate that information for you. It doesn't hurt to have more information than that is needed.
Now we'll enter in demo 4. Again, the entity numbers and stock numbers are populating for us. We can change them if we like, or we can just tab through and put our dollar amounts in. And likewise, the comments duplicated from the line above. I can change the comments to different comments. Demo 5, the split transaction. When we enter an amount in and save the record, Demo 5 will actually be split into Demo 5A and Demo 5B as we have stated in the GL account file. If we cannot remember a GL account number, we can hit the search button, click the column heading you want to search by, and type in what the search criteria will be. And everything with the word rent will appear. Just select the line that you like and hit OK. You can also type in part of an account number, in this case 1, 2 and a question mark, and it brings up every GL account that started with 1, 2 in the two, first two characters or whatever that you put before the question mark. In this example, we will type in account number 2000. Let's say that you had an account number 2000, but that was last year and you decided to reformat your chart of accounts and come up with different numbers. So we went in on the chart of accounts and we set up an account number called Demo 6. And in the external account number, we keyed in the number 2000, which is our old account number. When I type in 2000 and hit enter, it automatically knows that there is no account called 2000 and that was the old account number and cross-references account 2000 back to demo 6. So if you decide to change your GL account numbers midstream, the system will allow you to do that, and if you can't remember it, just type in the old account number and it'll change it for you on screen. To edit any transaction that you've entered in, just simply click the mouse onto the field or tab through it. In this case here, we have a line item 1275 that we want to remove completely from this posting entry. I highlight the record selector and I hit the delete key on my keyboard. The system prompts as to whether or not you really want to delete this transaction. We will click yes. Another feature you have on this grid is the filter bar. If this posting entry had thousands of transactions on it and you wanted to find a specific transaction with this entry, you could go into the filter bar and type in what you're looking for. In this case, I typed in 879 and it cleared all the other entries, giving me only the one that I am searching for or those that match that criteria. If I want to sort these transactions, I can click the column headings. In this case, I sorted the GL account numbers descending. I can do the same with the debits or the credits. Any column heading can be sorted. We're going to make one more change to this transaction before we save it. I'm changing the account number Demo1 to Demo2 because Demo2 requires a stock number. But I'm not going to enter a stock number. That field will be highlighted in red. Also, down in the bottom right hand corner, you can see the total of my debits and my credits and the difference. I'm out of balance by $300. Nevertheless, I'm going to hit the save key. Once I hit the save key, the system processes the edit checks and it states that there are multiple issues that need to be fixed. Those issues are, number one, I'm missing a stock number, and number two, I'm out of balance. I can still save this record, but it will have to be marked as unposted. If the transaction is not posted, it is not going to affect my general ledger figures. We will correct this entry so that it will be able to be saved and posted. Now that I have corrected the entry, I'm going to add some additional information. First, I'm going to tag on some other documents. We'll put a finance deal on this transaction. We'll go to demo 4. And we'll put on a parts ticket. 
We're going to add one more account, 2300, which is accounts payable. We know our supplier number. Stock number is fine. And we owe that supplier, say, $100. and we'll balance our transaction out. When entity number 13 was set up, they were a default setting set for accounts payable, such as when invoices are due, and if there were terms for discounts to be applied if those invoices were paid early. But there are certain cases where you can override that invoice, where if the customer says if you pay within five days on this particular invoice or the terms of this invoice are different from your standard terms. Down at the bottom you can override the standard terms that are set for that supplier. When you go to pay this invoice at a later date and you're within the boundaries of the due date and the discount date the system will automatically apply this discount amount that's been entered in. If this information at the bottom were left blank then the standard default settings for that supplier would apply when you're cutting the check. We now have this entry in a state that we wish to save it. When we click the Save button, the system takes the transaction that was posted to Demo 5 and automatically splits it to Demo 5 A and B. If you remember in our chart of accounts setup, we took Demo 5 and said that Demo 5 A would get 50% and Demo 5 B would get 50% and thus the $100 debit to Demo 5 became a $50 debit to Demo A and Demo B respectively. To the right of the Save button is the Alert button. Like throughout the system, you can type alerts or notes on each transaction. From now on, when you open this transaction up, that demo alert will appear. If I want to remove the alert, I can just hit the Clear button, and it wipes it out. Next is the Search button. Clicking the Search button brings up a quick transaction search screen, which I can type in a reference number, a beginning transaction date, ending transaction date, and other information that I'd want to search by. Clicking OK would retrieve the transactions based on my search criteria. If I wanted to delete this transaction, I can click the Delete key. The system is going to say that you have clicked the Delete. Do you want to delete this transaction? And in the header portion of this posting entry, you can see the label Deleted. Deleted transactions are removed from your general ledger reports. If this transaction were deleted by mistake, you need only to come down and click the Undelete key. This transaction is now pushed back into the General Ledger reports. If I'd like to email an entity that has a transaction on this screen, such as Entity 3312, I need only to highlight that line for that entity and click the Email button. This feature allows you to quickly send notes or emails to your entities without leaving the screen. It is very helpful when you need to send an email or note and want to get that done right away so that it doesn't get forgotten. If this transaction is a temporary transaction or is a transaction that you want to adjust in a future month, you can click the Reverse button. And the Reversing Entry screen will appear. You can type in the reference number, but it will already default to your current reference number, plus a dash R to show that this is a reversing entry. You can enter the posting month and year that you wish this transaction to be pushed into. In this case, we will move it ahead to the next month. When I hit OK, it has created an entry that reverses all of these figures. When month 10 comes around, I can go back into that entry and make any adjustments. If you'd like to scan a document or view a scan document, you can click the Scan button or the View button. It allows you to attach scanned images directly to this transaction. The exit button will close the screen. If the record has not been saved, you will be prompted to whether or not you wish to save this record. Systems 2000's accounting module has a built-in speed search feature. This enables you to find documents just by typing in the reference number. For example, 
If you're looking for a particular parts or service invoice, you need only to type in the invoice number. If you're looking for a deal, type in the deal number. You don't have to click anywhere on the screen, just start typing the number and the system will pick that number up and do an automatic search when you hit the enter key. In this example, we'll type in 123 and press enter. The search results display every document that's got 123 as the reference number. If I want to find 12345, I just type those numbers in and again hit enter. I did not have to move my mouse or click on anything. The search results automatically pick up the keyboard entry and drill down to that document ID or reference number that I had typed in. There are several ways to search for and recall transactions for editing. If you know the journal that the transaction was posted in, just click that journal and the transactions for the current month will be displayed in the transaction selection grid. This grid is standard throughout all journals. It displays the reference number, company number, the current month and year that you're posting in, the transaction date that this entry was posted, the journal code, whether or not there is an alert associated with this transaction, whether the transaction was flagged as deleted, and whether or not the transaction is posted to the general ledger. For example here, we can see that this transaction has an alert. To the right is a button called Open. If I click this button, it opens up the actual posting entry. It had an alert that we just click OK, and now the transaction is available for editing. If we were to open the document that's associated, the system will display the original document that this posting entry came from. In this case, it's a parts ticket. On this record, we can see that it's highlighted in red in the posted. This is telling us that this transaction is not affecting our general ledger and needs some attention. If we open this document up, we can see that we have an account that requires the entity. If we type in an entity, and hit the Save button, the system displays a prompt that says this transaction is marked as not posted. Would you like to mark it as posted? And I will say yes. The posted checkbox is then checked. We can hit Exit, and by double clicking the header, the screen is refreshed. Down in the bottom section is what we call the preview pane. If I click on a record, it automatically brings up the information. I cannot edit it down in this section, but it is quite useful if I want to just arrow key down and see each transaction without having to go through and open up every individual one. At the top of the screen is the filter bar. If there are too many transactions to scroll through, I can start to type in the number and, and drill down to the transaction that I want to see. Another method for searching for transactions is to click on the search transactions just beneath the journal in the accounting menu tree. The search transaction grid shows every transaction that has been posted for this month. If we want to see transactions for other periods, we can either enter in a date range, this year, or all dates. Clicking this year, and then clicking the refresh button displays every transaction for the year. At that point, I can start to use the filter bar at the top to drill down and find the actual transactions that I'm looking for. In this example, we will try to find all transactions for entity number 3312. As we type in the 3312, the grid is filtered for that entity number. I can apply other filters to the grid. Until I have the transaction that I am looking for. Once I have found that transaction, I can just click the open button and edit the transaction as desired. To clear the results from the filter, click on the icon to the far left of the filter bar. This removes any filtration and displays all the transactions as specified 
by the date range or criteria at the bottom. If I want to group the transactions by any column heading, I need only to click on the column heading itself and drag it up to the group by. Now all transactions are sorted and grouped by GL account number. If I want to look at the transaction for account 1000, I just click the expansion icon to the left. You can group by more than one column heading. Let's do GL account number and entity number. Now when I open up 1000, I will see it grouped by entity number and I can drill down on that entity number to see their, those transactions that have been posted under account 1000 and entity number 1231. To remove the grouping, just bring the column heading back down to where you'd like it. You can move the column headings by dragging and dropping. Another feature of the filter bar is the ability to use the drop-down list. The drop-down list is populated with every variation of that column. Another feature of the filtration bar is the ability to select the conditions of which your criteria will use. For example, the default is equal to. So whatever I type in for the condition, all information displayed will equal my criteria. such as less than, greater than, like, starts with, and even does not contain. Each column heading can be clicked to sort the information either ascending or descending. This is useful for finding transactions with a specific amount. Let's filter for all transactions with a debit of $10,000 or more. So we select greater than, Type in 10,000 and press enter. In the comments, in the comments, let's find everything that contains the number 2,000. So at this point, our filtration says find everything with a debit of $10,000 or more and everything with a comment with 2,000 somewhere in the comment description. To clear the filter and reset the data, click the icon to the far left. The option All Journals This Month is a quick search feature that is located under the journal heading on the accounting menu tree. Click this option and instead of going through each transaction through the journal, you get every transaction for the month. The not posted designation on a transaction states that this transaction is not impacting the general ledger. Another term for not posted are transactions that are in suspense. For example, if a transaction is out of balance or it is missing some required information, the system will not allow it to affect the general ledger. To find all transactions that are not posted, just click on the not posted section located under the journals on the menu tree. When the not posted section is highlighted in red, that means you have transactions that are in suspense and need some attention. That you check your not posted transactions on a daily basis or any time that you see it listed in red. In most cases, when a transaction is transferred from one of the external modules such as parts, service, or finance, and they are missing information that cannot be handled at that department level, an alert is automatically attached to that transaction and the transaction is flagged as not posted. In each of these transactions, you will have to open the transaction up, make the corrections, and once the transaction passes the edit checks, the system will change the transaction to a posted transaction and update the general ledger and all schedules. To transfer transactions from the parts and service modules, you need to go to Tools and click on the option Transfer Transactions. The system will display what it calls the results screen. This is a listing of all transactions that were not posted or sent to accounting or have an issue. The system will actually close this screen in approximately 60 seconds. 
If you need to look at it more in depth so you know which transactions to correct, just click the Launch button and it will open the screen in Notepad. We can see by looking at the results that we have a few transactions that need to be cleaned up. In this case, we activated the GST but never put in what the GST purchase account was going to be. It tells us that these transactions were not sent to accounting. We simply need to go into the company information, type in what the actual GST purchase GL account is, and then rerun the process and these transactions will come over. In other cases, you have transactions that came from the service department that were missing information. These actually came over to accounting and you'll be able to go in there and find out what is incorrect with them and make the change in accounting. And the final one here shows a repair order that the vehicle is missing or has an invalid GL account number. It too was not sent over to the accounting system. You can see that it is vehicle 1016. So you'd go to the vehicle inventory, recall that vehicle, check the GL accounts on the financial tab, make sure that they are all there and they are appropriately applied to that vehicle and then run the process again for transfer transactions and these transactions will come over. Any transactions that came over such as these three that were out of balance will end up in your not posted section. And at that time you will want to go in, open those transactions up and make the entries and post them to the GL. Keep in mind that if you have transactions in the not posted section you might be looking at a profit loss or a balance sheet that may not have valid financial figures on them. So again, we urge you to keep an eye on the not posted section and keep those transactions to a minimum. Finally, when all transactions have been taken care of and you transfer transactions, you will end up with a result screen that just says process beginning date and time and process ending date and time with no transactions.